I'm Laura from STEM Academy South and we're delighted to um, host the third part of the STEM Lectures Christmas series. Um, we're really excited to welcome today Teresa Stevens, who was one of the inspirational women of Portsmouth 2020. Um, I attended the award ceremony um, in March. Um, just after my daughter had been born. And I remember that there was so many different awards and so many inspiring women, but Teresa was one that really stuck out in my mind as a fellow STEM woman. Um, and I was just really excited. I wanted to know more about her pirate detection mechanism. So when we came to organize the uh, lectures, I spoke to Ronnie Edwards from Palmozzi Creatives and said, please, please, can we have Teresa? Do you think you can get in touch? And she kindly, um, kindly agreed to, to participate in our series of STEM lectures. So I'm just going to hand over now to Jasmine Bone, who is one of the non-executives from Palmodzi, um, to just talk a little bit about the Palmodzi Inspirational Women of Portsmouth Awards. So over to you, Jazz. Um, so as Laura said, um, I'm Jasmine. I work with uh, Palmodzi Creatives, and I'm also working with Laura with STEM Academy South. Um, we, yeah, I just wanted to give you a little rundown of how Teresa was actually sort of chosen to be our Inspirational Woman of Portsmouth 2020. The way we measure who gets chosen for our awards, I think we had 180 nominations this year. Um, and it's not about the number of like nominations one person receives, it's about the huge impact that they have on our local community. So yeah, so the work that Teresa has done and the many, many lives that she has impacted was one of the reasons that we actually chose Teresa for our award. Um, and as a woman of STEM myself, Teresa is one of those amazing inspirations just to sort of show you what can happen when you really put your mind to something. So yeah, over to you, Teresa. <laughs> Thank you, Jasmine. Well, as you know, I'm Teresa Stevens. Um, I got into the anti-piracy through a very long and complicated route. I went to school in Portsmouth, grew up just outside Portsmouth, um, and didn't do terribly well at school, didn't really enjoy school. So left and did various jobs, then married early, had three daughters by the time I was 21, um, and got myself into training to be a chef. So when the girls went to school, I worked as a chef and in the hospitality industry for 30 years, running hotels, restaurants, pubs, all sorts of things. Um, and during that time, my marriage had broken up. So while I was running a pub um, in Winchester, I met my now husband, David, who is a mechanical engineer. Um, he had an idea for a system to stop stolen cars, stolen vehicles, any vehicles. So anyway, we designed it, we installed it, we showed it to the police, they loved it. But apparently there is some white paper somewhere that says you cannot stop a vehicle without the driver, not the owner, the driver's permission. So we then transferred it to commercial shipping. Um, which was vastly expensive, computer links, et cetera, et cetera. We demoed it on a um, ship in the Solent and we were in Abu Dhabi. And we'd given one of the ship owners a computer with the system in, uh, a laptop, and he was just running his finger over the mouse. And of course the wheel in the bridge was moving. And he said, who's doing that? And we said, well, you are because it's all connected, it's remote control. So he then almost dropped the computer and said, we can't do that. What if pirates hack the system? So we were a bit disappointed, but the feedback was find something to stop them getting on the vessels. So we came up with all sorts of ideas, but I literally woke up one Sunday morning with that design in my head. So I grabbed a piece of paper, drew it, and said to David, this will work. It will stop the hooked ladders getting over. It will stop grappling hooks getting over. The protruding nose, even if they managed to log something onto the ship and it caught on, as you can see, on the ship, the superstructures. If anything was to catch on to that, 
if they threw it hard enough, they'd climb up and get stuck under the overhang, like climbing a cliff. And the size of that is such that a man's arm cannot reach over it. So we made a small version, a miniature version and a miniature ladder, phoned all the shipping companies in London, um, took it round and one CMA said, I like that, yeah, we'll give it a go. So I then had to spend, once you've got it up and going, I then had to spend almost a year researching plastics, which I knew nothing about, absolutely no idea. Plastics Federation were a huge help, found the right compound, found someone to draw the design and make the moulds. If you imagine, they're like giant jelly moulds. So what happens is the compound is like granular, it's like sugar, and they pour a set weight into the mould and it goes into what they call a rotary oven. So there's arms with all the moulds on, and what it does, it goes into the oven and it spins them every direction and melts the compound. And the weight of the compound denotes the thickness of the units. But also in that process, they put in the highest UV rating that they possibly can, so that it will, will stand various temperatures, minus 40 to plus 80. So once that's done, they're then trimmed up. You can see on the picture, there's a slot cut in so that they literally drop over the rails. They interconnect by overlapping, and then they're locked into place with straps. Takes minutes to put on, causes no injuries to the crew whatsoever, um, and is light enough for one man to pick up. So having got that first order, we then had to, and done all the research, we then had to get the orders to be able to sustain the manufacturer find a manufacturer that would actually do the job that we wanted done to the standard that we wanted it done. Um, and we are now manufacturing um, in Malaysia, Cape Town, and we're just setting up in Spain, which that is a very brief um, backstory. But during that time, I've also written a training manual for a maritime security student because I had to do so much research. It was the fastest learning curve of my life. If any of my teachers had ever seen how diligently I worked on this, they'd have been utterly stunned. So I wrote the Guardian um, or the Maritime Security Manual for the students, which is now I think in about four or five countries. We also had, obviously, I think most companies do, people that worked for us, that were friends, that were trusted, that, then tried to steal the idea. We've had patent, patent infringements because we've got patents all over the world that we've had to fight court cases with. Um, and also, which is a laugh to see as I'm on the computer now, neither myself or my husband had used a computer for work before. We're that generation that didn't grow up with computers. We knew nothing about them. Thank God for Sarah, because she's dragging us out of the stone age. Um, <laughs> and is teaching us how to work more efficiently and smartly. Uh, we've so far managed to do several Zoom presentations this year. Um, and I seeing as this is probably the way forward for the next foreseeable future, I would imagine that we'll be doing a lot more of them. Um, it's a great way to, to interconnect with people. But the, the greatest thing that I want to say, and especially if this is going out to schools and young women across the country, is that if you don't think you're terribly clever and you don't do terribly well at school, just keep trying. Because I was in my 50s and my husband was in his 60s when we came up with this idea. Um, and I never dreamed that when I was a young mother and I was struggling when I was raising children that there would come a time where I would come up with an idea like this and that would send me all over the world, which it has done. It would win me 10 global awards, 
um, one of them being the Horner's um, Innovative Use of Plastic Award, which was um, awarded to me at the Mansion House in London. Um, and it has been an incredible roller coaster of a ride, stressful, but enjoyable. Sometimes hair pulling out can't go on, but you do, and there is always a better day. Where we are now, we are close to 500 ships with Guardian on. We are protecting hundreds and hundreds of maritime um, seafarers. We're also protecting trillions upon trillions of dollars worth of cargo. Um, and considering that 96% of everything we use in the UK comes by ship, yeah. that's a pretty staggering amount yeah. that of shipping that we protect. That, you know, you wouldn't get your mobile phones, you wouldn't get your cars, you wouldn't get half of the stuff that comes into the UK without these guys working this job. Um, you know, we've had to learn everything from scratch. So it doesn't matter how old you are or what you think you can't do, you can do. You know, I thought I could never get on a computer and be computer savvy, but you know, we do it every day, all day, every day. Our business is run by computer. So if you can't do something, either get someone to teach you or teach yourself because you will get there in the end and if you have an idea don't think oh that's a silly idea that's not going to work because it will work it will work if you believe in it which we did so strongly that you know we sold our houses we self-financed we did everything we could to get this product out there because we believed so strongly that it would save lives mm -hmm. Yes, I'm not really. Um, the latest thing we've done is we've joined um, with Mercy Ships. Now, I don't know if anyone's heard of Mercy, Mercy Ships, but oh, they're going through the presentation now. Um, I don't know if anyone's heard of Mercy, Mercy Ships, but they go to Africa and work with um, terribly, terribly disfigured children these are our clients that we are currently working with this is uh that was pictures of the guardian that were installed and how they're installed by literally that's protecting a ladder that's without that's with it not only tidies the ship up to be fair being a woman i do like a tidy ship but it looks so much better um it improves the look of the ship and it secures its safety. And the only way, the only time you need to remove a unit or two is to put the mooring lines out, as you can see in the top right picture. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if we go through, these are our oil and gas FPSOs. FPSOs are giant oil tankers that are anchored to the sea floor between four oil um, wells. So the oil pumps directly into this giant tanker and then the LNG fleet uh, or the oil tankers come up and fill up like a giant oil station, not a petrol station. So we have these protected all around the coast of Africa and various other places where um, they are drilling for oil. CMA were the ones that gave us our first break um, for eight years. We've got patents all around the world. It's the only system to have defeated five pirate attacks in the Gulf of Guinea and since November 2016 they approach the vessels with Guardian on but they don't even attempt to attack. They'll drive around, they know they can't get on, they go off and find new, something easier to attack which is why we're struggling to understand why clients don't fit it faster. So and as you can see it works out incredibly economically. Um, this is a, a view from the bridge of uh, looking down onto a ship with Guardian on. So if you're approaching it, it uh, stands out 
And what we do, we don't, we used to send crews all over the world to install it. But it is so simple that we now do a very descriptive video installation and we send it through the clouds to the ship and the crew sit and watch it. We recommend two or three times um, and then they can install themselves. It saves the clients money and the crew feel better protected because they've built the wall themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think the next one, oh, yep, yeah. click through. This is before and after. Um, that's a after it's fitted. And that's again, it looks so tidy, doesn't it? It really does. And it's just, and I think what's beautiful, it's just so simple, isn't it? Like It is. <laughs> yeah, I worked with a guy once who said, keep it simple, stupid. And I've always kept it in mind. But as well, there's nothing, there's nothing to really go wrong with it either, because there's no moving no. parts to it, there's no mechanics, it, and it just completely stops them getting on board. It's incredible. Yeah, it is. That's what everyone that said when we first started showing it. How can something this simple not already be around? And we said, well, it isn't. This is how it's delivered. They slide inside of each other, 12 to a pallet, and then they're stacked inside a container. So they're easy for the guys to pull out. You know, we literally tried to think of everything to make it as simple and as streamlined as possible for them to um, unload and, and put it on. Ah, now. It weighs just 14K, it's four millimeters thick. And that was my husband five years ago, oh no, four years ago, before he lost a lot of weight. Um, but it's not even deflecting, you can see. And what happens if they try to attack it with um, axes or it just bounces off. And you can see in the front here, these are, vents to let the green water there's a slight curve at the back and green water is storm water that comes over the rails and sits on the deck so obviously you can't put a barrier on and hold that water in so we designed this with the curve at the back and the two very slim vents that you can't get your fingers in um, to let the water out of the deck so um, that's you know it weighs 14 kilos I can pick it up so certainly a crewman can. And you just literally pick it up, drop it over the rails. It's that simple. And you see the ridge, that's where this side locks onto. And then once it's strapped down, it's connected seamlessly all the way along. Ah, oh, this is the Hornet Award. Very posh to do this one, girls. Um, posh Rocks Fab Dinner, Lord Mayor of London. Um, and this is the president of the Horners Association, so called because before plastic was invented, nearly everything, drinking vessels, if they weren't made of glass or china, they were made from horn. So, and it was the Horners, and they dress up in the most fabulous robes. So anyway, the actual award is a giant polished horn set with silver with a silver plaque on. This is the perpetual one. So our names are now on the bottom of that in 215 for the most innovative use of plastic. Um, and we were up against some incredible companies. BOAC was, I think one of the, no, BOAC, one of the air, airlines anyway, was up we were up against and all kinds of other incredible competition. So we were stunned when we won. It's fantastic, absolutely thrilled to bits. So that was one, and then we've since won several more. I think there's some pictures of David, yeah, the most extraordinary con uh, contribution to health and safety. Um, and we've won that for four years on the run. We've just won another one for 2021, which we haven't got the award for yet. Now this is Mercy Ships, right. Now there's, we're gonna show a video. It's a couple of minutes, but it is so worth watching. What these people do, we were so happy to gift Guardian to them to protect their vessels. Yeah. 
When we launched the Africa Mercy, we believe that despite the resources required, the challenges waiting to be conquered, and the epic sacrifices that had to be made, nothing would deter us from providing life-saving and life-changing treatments to those in Africa where 70% of the world's poorest people live. Driven by our faith, the hope of Mercy Ships is only matched by the hope of African people who've had their lives restored and forever changed. This hope is also shared by the new generation of African healthcare workers that we are training. The healthcare infrastructure and the healthcare partnerships we're building in Africa will in fact outlive us. Mercy Ships has come a long way, but we're just getting started. Our hope has not only expanded our reach, but also our faith and our ambition. And with this, we announce the Global Mercy, which will more than double our current capacity. With the Global Mercy, the largest and first of its kind in the world, we're gonna reach more, teach more, save more, and provide more of the unquantifiable hope and healing for which Mercy Ships is known. The Global Mercy will not only save and change lives today, but with our committed supporters and partners around the world, we will build a new healthcare workforce in Africa. The Global Mercy will make it possible to assemble on a single mobile ship the huge array of skills, knowledge, facilities, and technology we need to have the greatest possible impact with the resources at our disposal. There are far too many people in our human family that are dying from preventable and treatable conditions. For Mercy Ships, this is just the beginning. We've learned a lot and done a lot, but we know that this story is still unfolding. So that, um, that video is, uh, we actually watched a program uh, a few months ago on the Mercy Ships and that inspired us to get in touch with them and offer to protect this vessel and the new global because the areas that they go in are such high risk areas for piracy attacks that um, we were so, blown away with the work that they do that we kind of just said we've got to look after them you know every guy on, and girl on that ship is a volunteer um so it just blows me away that people are prepared to give up six months of their lives sometimes years some of those guys have been on their years to look after and help people in a lot worse situations than they're in so it's pretty staggering. So that's our that's our latest um, little expedition. So we'll be doing um, we're going to the uh, presentation or the uh, launching of the Global Mercy, and when they fit the other one, we'll um, or Mercy ship will go and uh, go and sort of help that out as well. And as we're coming almost to a close, Teresa, when we spoke on the phone in preparation for this talk, we kind of had a chat about um, being a woman in STEM and you talked about um, probably being quite underrepresented in the shipping industry. Could you just talk about a little bit about that? Oh, my goodness. Well, if this film goes out to any colleges or students, the, the diversity of work available within the shipping community is vast everything absolutely everything you can think of any job that you can do on land you can do for the shipping industry plus getting on the vessels i mean we've now got young female commercial captains you know 40 years ago when women in shipping was set up that was unheard of you know in the shipping emporium in london there was no ladies toilet you know they had to go out to the cafe to go to the toilet there was no provision for them whatsoever, but now we've got these 
captains and first officers who are not only doing the job, but doing it superbly. You know, they're not just cooks, you know, they're not just hostesses, they are doing the job and doing it brilliantly. You know, we've got um, female shipping company owners, we've got uh, Angela Cousis in Cyprus, runs a massive shipping company. There's several others, you know, it is an industry ripe for young women to get into and climb up that ladder fast. Amazing. Can I just say thank you so much, Teresa? That has been such an inspiring talk and your story is just incredible. Um, and as a teacher in Portsmouth, I am personally going to make it my, my job to now make sure that everyone knows about your incredible invention yeah. and the incredible journey and the story that that, that you've that's unfolded for you it's just so inspiring and I think that it will speak and resonate with so many yeah. people across Portsmouth but especially young women across Portsmouth and I think especially at the beginning when you talked about yeah. you know, being a young mother and and, and the, the careers that you had before and then you know to to always trying different things Right, final message to you girls in Portsmouth, ladies in Portsmouth, women of any age in Portsmouth. You have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, no one else will believe in you because it has to come from you. Self-confidence radiates from you, not to you. So if you want someone to believe in you, believe in yourself. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Teresa, and thank you everyone for coming this evening. Okay. Um, have a wonderful Christmas and stay safe. And you. Good night. Good night. Good night.